מבצר אותה ארד. Is it... Is it you? Yes. Come. Let me see you. Come. After so long, I finally get to look on you once again. Oh, you're so handsome. And my father, is he here too? No, he... well, I fear he gave up long ago. Gave up? It's hard to explain. When our mortal bodies are no longer able to carry us, the spirit, well, it moves on. But, if the death was especially heinous, or if there is some sort of unfinished business left behind, the spirit can become restless and remain. When that happens, the spirit is condemned to walk until they are laid to rest. Their business is completed, or they give up. What happens then? When they give up? I... I'm not quite sure, but I know that they walk no more. Is that why you were here? Because of how you were killed? But why are there no others? Oh, such dreadful questions. <sighs> But yes, partially. Most, however, I remain because of you. Me? Yes, you, my child. As for the others, there were many at first. But as the centuries have gone by, they have disappeared, one by one, until only I now remain. Mother. Yes? Where were you? So many times I cried out from my bed in the orphanage, and when I was too old to stay, I cried from the streets. But you never came. You never answered. If you've been here all along, why didn't you answer? Where were you? Dear child, my poor baby boy, I was lost. It took me many years to coalesce into the form you see now. And when I was finally able to, you were gone. I blame Kaganak. I searched for you everywhere. And then one day, I heard a voice. Even though it was faint and quickly grew distant, I knew it was you. I tried to reach out before you were lost to me again, but I was too late. That monster had taken you from me. Monster? Do you mean Kaganak? Mother, I don't understand. No, not Kaganak. Please, sit. There's so much to discuss. <sighs> I'm not sure even where to begin. Mother, tell me. What happened? <laughs> you sound just like your father. Calm down, he would say when I was upset. Tell me everything. His voice was always so calm and reassuring. And then he would just sit there and listen. I think you would have liked him, Sanak. Sanak, that is the name you use, isn't it? It's a good name. Who gave it to you? Master Enidak. Well, Ilanesh, really. She was Master Enidak's wife. Ilanesh. I will have to remember that name. And master? Of what? He was a master crafter and my forge master. A master crafter? He was quite powerful then. Yes, and one of the best. Tell me about him. About both of them. 
How did you come to be under the tutelage of a crafter? Well, after I was no longer allowed to stay at the orphanage, I lived on the streets. I would find bits of scrap metal and wire in the alleys and in trash piles and would make small trinkets, selling them to whoever I could to buy food. I approached Enidoc one day, not knowing who he was, but hoping to sell him a charm that I had just finished. I was particularly proud of it. Like the others, it was made of wire wrapped in whatever design I could make with it. It all depended on what I had to work with. But this one was different. The wire was very high quality, a rare find. I had ended up spinning the charm into the design of the crafter, incorporating various metals and polished stones that I had found. I didn't know it was the crafter symbol at the time, or that Enidoc was a master crafter himself. I only knew that it came out perfect and that he looked like someone who might be willing to buy it. He looked at it briefly and then asked where I'd taken it from. I didn't think he believed me when I told him that I had made it, but after asking a few questions about the pendant and how I made it, he gave me a few dumaks for it and then left. Several days passed and I had all but forgotten about him. And then one day, as I was working on another trinket, I looked up and there he was standing over me. I remember it so clearly. He extended his hand and simply said, Come with me. I thought that I was in trouble and that he had convinced someone that I had really stolen the charm that he had bought. But as I followed him, I could tell that he was not taking me to the priests. Instead, we entered a workroom. There were tools and all manner of things there, but the forge, oh, the forge mother, it was amazing. Then he looked at me and simply said, welcome home. That's when he paused and asked me my name. I don't have one, I told him. They never gave me one at the orphanage. We'll have to fix that, he said. Just then a woman walked in. I saw right away that she was wearing the charm that I had sold him around her neck. It was held by a gold chain. They embraced and then she looked at me. So this is the boy you spoke of, she said. I felt awkward and embarrassed. Embarrassed? Why? I don't know. She was... She was just so beautiful, so regal looking. And there I was, filthy and dressed in rags with barely a hair on my chin. And the two of them, standing there together, they seemed like... like a king and a queen. And on top of it all, there around her neck, was my charm. And when Enidoc said to her, he hasn't a name, I was so ashamed. I made to leave, but she stopped me. She tipped up my chin and told me to look at her. And then she smiled at me before looking to Enidoc. He looks like Sanak, she said. My former master, he replied. Then he paused a moment and said, yes, he does a bit, doesn't he? We shall see, is all he said, and then showed me where I would sleep. He called me boy for a whole month, tasking me with various things to do around the workshop. And then one day he said to me, Sanak, bring me that ingot. And from that day on, that has been my name. You are named after your master's master? That is a great honor. I'm so proud of you. And this Ilanesh, what was she like? Ilanesh, she was very kind. Her hair was very long and so dark that it seemed to be made of spun ebony. She carried herself with an air of authority, but yet was never haughty or made you feel beneath her. Her face was soft and kind, and her eyes were the most brilliant violet. <laughs> you seem to have very, um, vivid memories of her, Sena. Mother, I was just a boy. <laughs> but yes, she was quite stunning. She wanted to adopt me, you know. I heard her say as much to Enidoc, but I was too old. A few years later, she became ill. And? She never recovered. Enidoc took her death very well, but if I'm honest, he was never quite the same after. <sighs> Mother, what happened? I read your journal, but after that, what happened? 
Kagernak. That's what happened. But I thought you said it wasn't him. That was after. The second time I lost you. The first time I lost you was because of Kagernak. When he struck the heart, the Dwemer were split apart from this world. I don't know how, but we were. But I was dead by then, and the dead were not brought with. In fact, many of the dead were thrown into the void, including me, but I was one of the few that was able to resist its pull. And you, well, you are not fully Dwemer. I believe that you were pulled towards Kagernak, but in the end, your former blood kept you here. What about Kagrenzel? I was cast out. I remember. I had finally taken form and saw you falling. I called out, but it was too late. I believe that it was at that moment that Kavanagh struck the heart. When I was falling? Yes. So it was you that I heard? Yes, distorted by time and distance, but yes. And the second time, this monster? In the darkness after Kavanagh, I met him. Well, in a manner of speaking. As I struggled to keep from being pulled into the void, I saw him there, in the void, trying to escape. Why he was there, I did not know, but it was not because of Kaganak. He wasn't a Dwemer. He looked like a Falmer, although he looked like no Falmer I remembered. His face was etched with hate and cruelty, and he was so full of rage. Finally, I was able to resist enough so that I could free myself from the void's pull and so I floated for millennia looking for you, all the while watching him through the thin veil that hung between us. I didn't know why, but he frightened me. It was during that time that I learned he was in exile, cast out by Ariel himself. And then it happened. I felt a hand upon my arm. It was him, the Falmer. I had gotten too close and he reached out through the veil and grabbed me. He smiled a wicked smile and then disappeared. At that moment, we were both thrown back to Nern. It wasn't long after that that I heard you. But when I fixed my gaze in your direction, I saw the Falmer instead. He was casting a spell, and then your voice instantly became distant, and then you were gone. He had created some sort of tear in the very fabric of time. It was like a shell, an unbreakable shell. I could hear you if I tried harder, but I could not break through. Not until the age realm had been solved. Not until the oculary came back to life. It punctured the shell, if only slightly. But it was enough. But then time shifted, and once again you were gone. It was only when the orb faltered, and was then taken by the Sigix, that the shell finally shattered. That I could finally contact you. But the fracture still exists, and I was so far from here. I only had enough strength to speak briefly and leave you my journal. I had found it long ago while searching for you. You are still out of sync, Zinak. Out of sync with the world around you. Out of sync? I don't understand. How do I get back in sync? You must fix the fracture, the tear. How do I fix this tear? And will that free you from here? I have found you. My initial business is complete and I am at rest now. I am free, but I will not leave you. Not while you are trapped in this reality of yours. And the only way to heal this break, this tear, is by destroying that monster, the Falmer. How? I've never seen him. Except in my dreams, I think. Even that I'm not certain of. You must find Kagunak's tools. The gauntlets, the blade, and the hammer. Only while holding them will you be able to confront him. Kagranak's tools? Surely they must be gone. No, Tanakh. They're not fully of Nern, nor are they fully of Aetherius. They lie somewhere in between, where you are. How do I find them then? I will help you. I think I know where they might be. Where? Falls are doomed din. Falls are doomed din? But how will I get there? I don't know. Not yet. But that's okay, because you need time to study. Study? Study what? How to control the machines. You cannot control them, can you? The Centurions? No. I've never been able to. I thought as much. Your former blood has diluted your abilities, but I think I know a way around that. 
I believe that the secret lies within the properties of the Crimson Nerve Root. With it, we can create a potion that will amplify your Glimmer Blood and allow you to use your abilities. Crimson Nern Root? But that leads me back to Falls Din. Yes. Go. Learn all you can about Crimson Nern Root. You should also take time to sharpen your skills. The monster that you must defeat will not acquiesce so easily. While you are preparing, I will find a way into Falls Din. And what about this Falmer, this monster? What if he interferes before I'm ready? Before I can find the tools, wherever they are? He has been dealt a blow by the Sigix, and will not interfere. Not for some time, anyhow. As for the tools, you must follow your instincts. Only you can find them. Now go. There is much to do. Mother, before I go, do you know of a... Cuomac? No. Why do you ask? I found this note in my bag just recently, but I didn't put it there. It talks of going to Masser. Mother, do you think it's possible that this Kuomak knows how to return to our people? No, Sanak. I do not. This note makes me very nervous. Remember, Sanak, you are between worlds, and I do not believe this was meant for you. I don't know its purpose, but I strongly advise you to avoid this myrrh at all costs. If you cannot get rid of this note, hide it and never look at it again. Zanak, you must accept that the Dwemer have left, and that you are no longer with them. But... when the fractures mended? No, Zanak. Not even then. Oh, Zanak, you have been alone for so long. I understand your desire. But you must look to the past no longer, my child. That world is no longer yours. The sooner you can acknowledge and accept that, the sooner you will discover your place within the here and now. The sooner you will find peace. And when you find peace, Anak, you will find that you will never be alone again. Mother? Yes, Anak? I'm glad you're here. Me too, love. Me too.